So I just got the scope done. Great success. I'm a little giggly. I'm a little bit giddy right now. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> It's that time of year again. If you couldn't already tell, that means one thing and one thing only, colonoscopy. Now why is someone like me, you know, late 20s, healthy looking guy, getting a colonoscopy? Normally people getting colonoscopies are 50 plus and you do it once every 10 years for a colon cancer screening. Younger patients like myself, I have inflammatory bowel disease, um, you may have another acute or chronic gastrointestinal disease where having a camera with biopsies either from the back end or the top end can help diagnose and treat your condition. So this is number six or seven for me. I'm losing track. I've had IBD for 10 years now, 10 plus years. Anyways, the way it works is there are two days. Tomorrow is the actual scope. I'm doing an upper, meaning they take the camera, put it through your mouth, look at your esophagus, your stomach, your small intestine, and also from the back. And they look at your rectum, your colon, all the way to your cecum. That day actually isn't that bad. I mean, you get sedated and you usually don't remember the procedure, at least you're not supposed to. I do sometimes wake up, which isn't normally all that fun, but today is actually much harder because today is the prep. So clear liquids starting this morning and now I actually need to do the laxatives. And this is where you are cleaning out your system so that when they go up with the camera, they can actually see the intestinal walls and there isn't fecal matter obscuring the view. Speaking of which, I need to take some Dulcolax right now. All right, and we got 20 milligrams of Dulcolax. So, cheers. Now the party's really getting started. Normally when people learn about Crohn's, the dietary restrictions, the abdominal pain, the frequent visits to the bathroom, the colonoscopies, they normally say, damn, that sucks. But you know, I don't really see it that way. And in Stoic philosophy, there's this saying, amor fati. And in Latin that translates to essentially to love one's fate. And that's kind of the philosophy I've taken towards IBD ever since the beginning, back in 2009. I saw that IBD, or at least I told myself that IBD is my superpower. It's something that makes me stronger, not weaker. I mean, here's the thing, you are gonna have, you probably already have or soon will have some curveballs thrown your way in life. And resisting and fighting them and, and like kicking and screaming, that doesn't really do anyone any favors, right? If I was like sitting here complaining about it and like, oh, woe is me, my life is so tough, life's not fair. That doesn't help me, that doesn't help you, that doesn't really help anyone. It's just a lose-lose proposition. Whereas if I see the positive, the benefits, essentially I come out ahead. I come out better than if I didn't have it. And if that sounds crazy, let me tell you two stories. First, let's go back to college. So I've always been kind of disciplined, pretty structured, but back then, you know, I, I would eat healthy. I would avoid pizza, I would avoid burgers, even though I loved both of them. But every now and then you have a cheat meal, a cheat day, whatever. And I remember having pizza, Cavell Dining Commons, UCLA, such good pizza, man. And I would, I would be eating, you know, my very plain, like white noodles and rice and potatoes and plain chicken with no spices. It had to be very bland for a long period of time. And across from me, my friend, you know, pizza and all these other things, and it would smell so good and it would look so good. So I'd go up, grab a slice, eat it, even though I knew it wasn't supposed to, and then I would pay the price. And I did the same thing with some burgers. I don't know why, I was craving a double quarter pounder with cheese from McDonald's, which is kind of a nasty burger. Like at least crave in and out or something decent. For whatever reason, I craved that. And I had it, I think, two or three times, and I paid the price for the pizza and for the burger. Long story short, I'm gonna get into the details, but it's very painful, it's very messy. It's like not a good situation when you're paying the price for those sorts of foods when you should not be eating them. And what that has translated to over the years is my discipline now, I was already pretty disciplined then. Now it's like, I don't even know what cheat meals are. I don't even know what cheat days are, right? Now that discipline translates beyond just diet, right? So obviously I don't do cheat meals or cheat days or whatever but that discipline translates to other areas of my professional life and my personal life. It's just a win-win. All right, number two. So when I was in med school, and actually for a while, I've been doing these Remicade infusions. And you go to the hospital every six to eight weeks, they put an IV in, administer the medication over three hours, sometimes it takes up to six. Then obviously there's a commute time, the checking in, checking out, all that process. It's really just an inconvenience. It's not a fun thing to do, but there's always value in everything, right? So my friend, uh, Dr. Amit Pandey, who you guys have seen in Day in the Life, he and I would study a lot in med school together. We were like, we were good buddies and he would, he would comment, he'd say, Kevin, you go, you know, on Sunday to this infusion, spend most of the day there, you, you're exhausted because these things will wipe you out, right? 
Then you come on Monday, you take the test with the rest of us, and then you crush it and do better than most of us. What the hell is going on? Like, how does that even work? And I told him like, hey man, I've had this since 2009. I've had this for all four years of college. And what it forced me to do, because back then it was even worse because I didn't have a car. So I had to go two hours to the hospital from UCLA because the public transit system, the buses are so bad in LA. And then you spend a few hours and then you take the bus back. It was, it sucked. And it was such an inefficient use of time. But by having those constraints, I was forced to be efficient. So by the time I got to med school, like I was the most efficient person I knew. And my productivity was up here. My efficiency was up here. My ability to get stuff done plus the discipline was up here. So even though Crohn's, I mean, there's a lot of things that I don't like about it. It has taught me these skills that I'm lucky to have been taught because if I was having a, a nice, easy, happy, healthy life, then I wouldn't have actually gotten those opportunities, right? So I'm not sure what the issues are in your life that you're facing. You're probably facing something big right now. If not, you, you probably soon will be. That's just the nature of life. But when it does inevitably happen, I urge you to see the value in it. Amor Fati, like you are going to derive value from it only if you have the right attitude. Now, that being said, one of the big lessons I learned in terms of productivity and efficiency is don't force it when you just can't do it. So right before filming this video, I I was doing some like legal documents for, for Med School Insiders. And I was like, you know what? I cannot focus because I have been eating so few calories today. It's actually easier to fast than it is. I've done like 40 hour fast, but doing a clear liquid diet with laxative like wreaks havoc. So I can't focus. What am I gonna do instead? Number one, make a YouTube video. Number two, maybe play around with my new gimbal, change my curtains or whatever. But I'm gonna do other things that don't require intense focus, do things that I enjoy, relax. It's not all about working all the time. So after the Dolcolax, now we take Gatorade and mix it with Miralax and you have four separate servings. I already did one and now I'm gonna have number two. Cheers. So since I can't be super productive and focus, I'm going to try playing around with this bad boy. This is the Weeble S Gimbal by Zhiyun. And I wanted to use it for, or at CES, but didn't get a chance to. So give me a few minutes and then we're gonna have some crispy, clean, smooth footage. All right, so got the gimbal set up. So now we're gonna take some epic smooth shots of laxatives. Now back to some, some more serious matters. Bidet should be more common, you know? And they are in, in certain Asian countries and European countries. But if you had a dirty driveway, if you had a lot of mud and dirt on said driveway, would you go out there with like paper towels and try to wipe it clean? Or would you take a hose and spray it down? Just saying. All right, so it's about 9 p.m. now and I gotta say, I feel a lot better than I was expecting. Uh, normally, I don't feel this good midway through a prep. So in terms of the prep, there's three parts. Number one, you take the Dulcolax. An hour later, you take part one of the Gatorade. You have a 32 ounce bottle of Gatorade and you mix Marilax in that and then you drink that within one hour. And then several hours later, you do part two. So I, I've done part one, I'm waiting for part two of the Gatorade. And I gotta say right now, I feel pretty normal. I feel pretty good. I think part of the reason that this is so much more like whatever is I've been doing some water only fast recently and there are some health benefits to that, especially if you, especially if you have IBD. So I did a 40 hour fast back in August and I did a 36 sometime in November, December. And those definitely do help you get used to being hungry and just kind of enduring this sort of discomfort, which now it doesn't really feel like a big deal. And for that first time I did a 40 hour fast of just drinking water, it definitely was a struggle. So now when I'm doing this bowel prep, it feels a lot easier and I think that could be part of it. The other thing is that I am being very aggressive in terms of properly hydrating and also having a lot of different types of clear liquid. So I'm having broth, I'm having some juice, I'm having some coconut water, I'm having some Ensure Clear. I'm really mixing it up and having a lot in addition to the bowel prep. So since doing part one of the Gatorade, I've even been watching TV. That's right, I was relaxing. And I watched the pilot episode of Succession, 
pretty good. Not not terrible. I'll probably watch episode number two as well. And it, it does feel kind of weird, not gonna lie, watching TV, especially past one hour, because back when I was in, in med school and, and residency during the grind, and this is actually a good habit to have. The habit I had was either I'm eating for like, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and that's the only time I watch TV, or I'm stretching, doing my mobility exercise, or I'm watching TV with friends or having some kind of social event. So watching TV here by myself in my bed feels kind of weird, but I'm glad that I'm putting my TV to use. So I'm actually gonna to transition to, to reading, maybe something light like Wabi Sabi or something a little bit heavier like um, The Power of Now or Principles by Ray Dalio, two books that I have been enjoying recently. Now one other thing, you know, it's not the most fun thing in the world to be getting a colonoscopy, not the worst thing in the world either by any means, but it makes you think, would you rather be the one getting a colonoscopy or doing colonoscopies? like day in and day out. And to me, I actually wanted to be a gastroenterologist back when I was in college and during my first year of medical school, and then I realized that it wasn't for me. But I think most people who weren't, you know, enamored with gastroenterology, or most people that didn't go to medical school, they probably wouldn't like the idea of doing colonoscopies day in and day out, multiple times per week, where you take a camera, you put up someone's behind and look at the colon, and you're just dealing with a lot of like nastiness, so, just kind of some food for thought, you know? Maybe, I, maybe I'm getting the better end of the deal right now. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. So now it is 6 a.m. Just registered. And now we wait. So it's 7 a.m. Just checked in. And now we wait. So I just got the scope done, great success, very happy, um, I need to ask them what meds they gave me, there's either propofol which is a sedative, quick down, quick up, or the alternative is um, diphenhydramine for, and, and Versed induction, and well it's not really induction because you're not doing general anesthesia and then you do uh, fentanyl for the pain. So midazolam, which is Versed, is a benzodiazepine, and diphenhydramine is Benadryl. So I'm told it was propofol and, and Versed. So I did not remember a thing, which I'm very happy about. And I feel good. I feel happy. And what? I'm a little giggly, I'm a little bit giddy right now. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> so one thing, Tuesday morning, I got a call from the gastroenterology clinic and I've been a little bit symptomatic recently. So super clutch that they were able to accommodate me today. Today's Thursday, so two days later, literally, actually less than two hours, less than two days because this is like early morning, 6 a.m. of, of um, Thursday. And one thing I'm really grateful for is that I got my mom to fly here with me because I have the Southwest Companion Pass, which allows someone to fly with you for free. So I'm excited to also make this churning video for you guys because literally churning has been one of the most rewarding hobbies that I've been a part of for the last, I don't know, since 2004, maybe 2003, so a long time. So. This is good. Life is really good. Colonoscopy was a great success. Headed back home. Um, been in a great mood ever since. I don't remember anything. I didn't wake up this time, which I'm happy about. And first thing I'm going to do is drink some probiotics. I'm going to try some sushi to celebrate later tonight. All right, guys, that is a wrap. It is now a little bit after 4 p.m. So I came back around 11 and then I just like slept for four hours or so. The meds they gave me. I'm actually not sure, I went to the anesthesiologist beforehand and I told, so there's like two main options, either you can do propofol or you can do a mixture of, of some medications, diphenhydramine, which is Benadryl, you can do Versed, which is midazolam, a benzodiazepine, and then fentanyl for the pain. That cocktail usually takes a little bit longer to, um, to recover from, and so you're kind of like drowsy and feel drunk-ish 
for a long period of time. That's what I used last time because I made another uh, colonoscopy video from a year and a half or two years ago. So if you watch this far, two things. Number one, if you are getting a colonoscopy, I hope that you understand it's not as bad as you think. This was number six for me, and this is probably the smoothest one. So learn from my mistakes. The first few were definitely not this smooth. And I hope that you can see this as a learning experience. It is, it's challenging. It helps you have a greater appreciation for food and see the things that you take for granted. I think there's a lot of positives to actually come out of this. And if you're not getting colonoscopy, but maybe you do have some other health issues or some other obstacles in your way, I hope you can still find the positive in that struggle, in that challenge. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Much love to you all, and I will see you guys in that next one.